For this video, I'm going to be turning all of this that I got during the Black Friday sales and all of these live plants into this tank and I really can't wait to see what it looks like when everything grows in. So first things first, this is a 160 litre tank which converts into around 42 US gallons and it comes in with the dimensions of 39 by 16 by 16 inches or 100 by 40 by 40 centimetres and I'm going to be using this as a guppy tank. I'm going to be using fluval stratum as my substrate of choice for this tank as I've used it in some of my other setups and I always get good results and I managed to save a little money in the recent Black Friday sales. I start the setup by adding about half a bag of fluval stratum to the tank and then I level it out so it's pretty even across the entire base plate of the aquarium. I'm aiming for this initial layer to be around one inch deep across the full length of the tank and because fluval stratum is not pre-charged with nutrient compounds like other aqua soils like ADA Amazonia I will be using root tabs. As you can see I've only added root tabs to the foreground and middle ground of the tank and then I added the rest of this first bag of fluval stratum over the top of it to complete this initial layer. That brings the current substrate depth up to around two inches for the fore and middle ground of the tank which is roughly what I was aiming for. The root tabs are now hidden from sight but in all honesty I'm really not sure if placing them on the glass and then just putting the two inches of substrate over the top would have been a better option. Next up I'm going to be adding a retaining wall of lava rock to the rear of the tank. I've chosen lava rock for three main reasons. Firstly, it's very cheap considering it's an aquarium rock and most places sell it by weight and the porous nature of lava rock means it's very, very light because of the air pockets inside of it so you get more for your money. Secondly, I've seen a number of people say that the porous nature of lava rock does help to provide suitable surfaces for beneficial bacteria to colonise and help keep your nitrogen cycle in check. And finally, lava rock is inert meaning it shouldn't mess with the water parameters in the tank like some other popular rocks can. One potential downside of lava rock is that it can float because the porous nature of the rock can trap air within the rock so you might have to glue it onto other rocks to keep it submerged. If you are going to test your lava rock before placing it in your tank then give the ones that float a minute or two to see if they will take on the water like this one to push the air out and naturally sink without you needing to use glue. Thankfully once I gave all of the rocks time every one of mine did naturally sink over time so I just built out the retaining wall towards the rear of the tank without using any glue to hold things in place. Now that I know where the lava rock's going to be in the tank I can add the rest of the root tabs behind them for my stem and sword plants. Then I add some more fluval stratum behind the retaining wall to provide some additional depth for the roots of the plants that I'm going to be keeping behind there. So this is what we currently have and the substrate layer behind the lava rock comes in at around three inches and I have around a quarter of the second bag of fluval stratum left over that I'll use on another project. Next up I add the heater and and filter of the tank just so I can get a rough idea where I want my plants to be with the accessories in there. I preset the heat at 73 degrees Fahrenheit or 23 degrees Celsius to ensure the water in this tank will be warm enough for my guppies but not so warm that it'll end up speeding up their metabolism because I want these guppies to live for as long as possible. I chose to add the filter and heater on the left hand side of the tank just to keep all of the tech in the tank in one place and then everything else can be natural and plant based. I picked up some manzanita wood for this project too but after placing it in the tank and getting a visualisation of what it's going to look like I really do think that I just ordered pieces that are too small for this tank size but I will be using it in a different project in the future. Now it's time to add my live plants to the tank and my initial vision for this tank was to have a retaining wall with faster grown stem plants and sword plants behind that and then in the middle and foreground of the tank I just want a cryptocorine field. Personally I like to work front to back when I'm adding my live plants to a tank so I line all of my crypts up against the glass so it's easy to get to them and I have various types of crypt wentii, some petii and some willsii. As I want to mix the different crypts up in the crypt field in the tank I use their plant tags for initial markers so I can quickly and easily move them around and get ideas for my plant placement without having to uproot the crypts every single time. I have seen a lot of people use tweezers for every single type of plant but when it comes to adding crypts to substrate personally I always find it a lot easier to just do it with my hand. But there are plenty of different ways that you can do this stage and still get great results. This is what the tank is currently looking like with the initial crypts planted in it. I really wouldn't mind adding more in the future but for now I just want to see how this initial batch of crypts grow in and what they look like after the melt stage. This is a top down view of the tank showing how I've spread all of the crypts out to act as line of sight and hiding spots because this will be an all male guppy tank so this kind of layout can help prevent aggression amongst the fish. So now it's time to plant everything behind the retaining wall and there really are a wide range of different plants that are going to be going here and I list 
all of them in the video description. Again, I choose to use the plant tags as the initial markers because it's a lot easier to pull these out and replace them if needed than the actual plants. Unlike the crypts, when it comes to stem plants, I always use my tweezers and personally I find it so much easier with stem plants to just use the tweezers and get it into the substrate as fast as possible. As you can see in this clip, I do try and spread the initial stems out as much as possible. So if I do take clippings during tank maintenance, I can replant them and bush out the rear wall over the coming months to really fill the tank out. So this is what we've currently got the tank looking like with all of the plants in there. And I'm really happy with what it's looking like right now. I really am. It looks better than I initially thought. And here's a top down view of what it's looking like now with everything else in there. And there are some intentional gaps around the Amazon sword for now. This is due to some of the plants actually being out of stock. So I want some Limnophilia sessile flora and some Rotala rotunda folia in the gap to the left. And I'll probably add some Bacopa carolinianna to the right. So now it's time to actually add water to the tank. And with my current setup, I'm still using a bucket and siphon method. So it is going to take a while to add enough water to this tank because of its larger volume. One thing that I would mention is that I am taking note of how much water this tank takes. Each full bucket is nine liters. And when I added each bucket, I did note it down. And in total, this tank took 126 liters, which is just over 32 US gallons. So 10 US gallons less than this tank's maximum capacity because of the substrate, hardscape and plants. Now this simple step of noting down the actual water volume in your tank can help with stocking options or endorsing medication in the future. Now it's time to add the lighting unit and there's a ton of decent lights out there on the market right now. Personally, I'm using the Nikru C10 because it's relatively budget friendly and it has performed well with my other tanks. Now this is what the tank is looking like with the lighting unit fitted and with it being full of water. And I just use this light on the default 24 seven setting to see how the tank responds and what happens with the plants. This is a little top down clip to show why I added the additional substrate behind the retaining wall so there's no light blockage from the lava rock. Here's a current close up of the tank from the front view showing the current condition of the plants. I'm very, very happy with how I got these plants, but I am expecting around half of these crypts to melt. Now it's time to add some tap water conditioner to remove the chlorines, chloramines and heavy metals. I know some people do it straight away, but I like to fill the tank and then dose it appropriately. So with all that done, it's time to set the filter up now. And I know there's a lot of different ways you can do filtration, but for this tank, I will be using a filter and I've chosen the All Pond Solutions HOB 500 and it is available in the United States under the Sun Sun branding. But basically this is a very cheap hang on the back canister filter with five trays to customize and a top tray that you can kind of customize as well to get it to do a wide range of different types of filtration. The setup that I'm going to be using, I actually got from Richard on the Pond Guru channel. So I linked to his video on how he goes over this filter in this video's description if you want to check it out. Now this filter does come with five fine filter pads as standard for the mechanical water polishing but that's really not what I want this filter to do so I remove four of them and those four filter pads will be kept as spares. So I'm going to be adding some coarse foam to act as the initial stage of filtration to try and remove as much of the larger particles right at the start of the filtration process so I just cut this down to size. Now keep in mind this is a top to bottom filter so this coarse foam will be going in the lid of the trays rather than at the bottom. Next up, I cut a length of medium foam and I add it to the first tray in the filter directly above the fine foam pad with the goal of this one being to remove as much of the medium sized particles as possible before it gets to the fine foam pad. Now I was curious, so here's a photograph of some bio gravel under my macro lens. For this particular setup, I filled three of the trays with the bio gravel. So that's around one kilogram or 2.2 pounds of it in there. Finally, I added some purigen to the bottom tray of the filter to try and keep the water as clear as possible but with there being no driftwood in here now this really shouldn't be an issue so I'm not sure if I needed this. So this is what the five trays and lid of the filter are looking like so we have mechanical biological chemical filtration in order from top to bottom. I do like to add a coarse intake sponge to the filter as well to act as a sort of pre-filter to catch some of the larger particles but also to help prevent any shrimp getting into the filter. Then I place the filter back on the tank but due to taking the photographs to document this stage of the setup I do make a mistake and I did forget to pre-wash my purigen so I ended up getting that dreaded purigen cloud that you see a lot of people talking about on social media. This is what the tank looks like within minutes of me turning the filter on but thankfully this isn't meant to be harmful to fish, plants or inverts and it will naturally clear over the course of the week but you can drastically reduce this time period and that's what I did. 
And this is what the tank looks like the next day and it is starting to clear up very quickly. Basically, I left the main filter on that I've just prepped but I did also add my standard backup HOB filter that I filled with fine filter foam for that extra level of mechanical filtration. It just gets this cloudiness out of the water very quickly. Now this red lava rock keeps catching my eye in the tank, so I decided to cover it with Java moss as I'm not going to be using the driftwood anymore. My method of bonding Java moss to hardscape is very simple, and I just use some Gorilla Glue Super Glue Gel. I add a small spot of the glue to the rock, and then I literally just apply clumps of the Java moss to it and repeat this process over and over and over over again until I'm happy with how the hardscape looks. This is what the rock looks like in my tank and I know it does look a little crazy but it will grow in over the coming months. I then added some more java moss to some of the spare lava rock that I've got laying around and played with different placements on the retaining wall to try and help fill it out and get the java moss looking as natural as possible so my shrimp will have somewhere to graze. Emergent plants can also offer several benefits to an aquarium so I wanted to try some with this setup and I've picked up some pothos cuttings just to see how they work. Now I'm just going to be using a standard potho carry to hold them in place so the roots will be in the aquarium and they can feed and the actual leaves can grow over the side and start to hang. I have four different types of pothos in this tank and I'm really not sure if these will work and if they'll continue to grow. It is my first time trying this. The final part of the setup for this guppy tank is to add some floating plants and I've chosen salvinia for this tank. These Tropica Grow Cups are very easy to use and you literally just pour them into your tank and then break down any larger clumps of plant to let the salvinia float around and propagate while helping to manage the nitrogen cycle. I will be keeping the salvinia in a floating plant ring for this tank just because it helps keep it all in one place and it makes it easier for me to manage the light distribution and ensure the plants at the bottom of the tank are getting plenty of light. This is a clip of what the tank is currently looking like after the initial setup and I really can't wait to see what it looks like in a few months once all of the plants have started to grow out. This tank is part of another monthly update series that I will be running on the channel moving forward though, so good or bad, I will be keeping you as posted with how this tank performs. Now I'm not actually going to be adding fish yet because I do want to wait until natural signs of life form in the tank such as algae grown on the tank glass. But here's a clip of some guppies in my 12 gallon tank because once this 40 gallon tank is ready, these guppies will be moved into it along with other guppies and various shrimp and snails as well. So thanks for watching guys and have a good day.